Welcome to Knit Together with Kim and Jonna. I'm Jonna. And I'm Kim. And we're here in our favorite local yarn shop, Pick Up Every Stitch in Mount Kisco, New York. Yes, and yeah. Karen and Felicia, the owners, are right behind this wall. Yep. Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> like the Wizard of Oz. And we have new microphones. Mm -hmm. But we don't have the air conditioning on or the heating on today because it's actually really nice outside. It's sweater weather, finally. Yeah, sort of. Bare yeah. It's barely sweater weather, yeah. <laughs> In the 60s, low 60s. Oh, my whole family is running around the house like, it's so cold because I set the heat to 68. <laughs> oh, you turned your heat on? Well, my mom turns it on as oh. soon as it, I mean, my mom will turn it on because she's oh. always cold. I mean, I get it. My mom's 81. Yeah. I want her to feel warm. But she puts the heat, I kid you not, on like 71. Oh, wow. But then we have these huge heating bills. I guess my dad kind of lives on his own level, on the, in the yeah. lowest level, so he kind of controls his own. Yeah. Yeah. But this year I put my foot down because it's just so expensive. So yeah. I just said to the whole family, I'm setting the heat. The thermostat isn't, um, what's it called when there's zones? It's not mm -hmm. zones. It's an old house. Um, it's on the main level. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just said, I'm setting it at 68. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and put on a sweater. If you're too cold, put on a sweater. If you're too warm, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Huh. Open the window. So you have forced air though, and we have a boiler. So it's yes. a little bit, it's, it's a big. It's still deal. a boiler. We have a, um, it's still a boiler, a uh, burner. We have radiate. A burner. We have radiators. Radiant steam, heat, yeah. Steam, yeah, steam heat. So anyway, yeah, so we don't turn on the uh, heat until I say so, which is when, we have those bed warmers, though. Yeah. So we turn our bed warmers on, and um, yeah, we don't turn it on until... Until it's like in the 50s and that. I wish. It's and just. I have to. Yeah. I, yeah, I just have to crazy. defer to my mom. It's technically her house. Yeah. And she gets cold. Yeah. So. She, she, yeah. She controls the thermostat, kind of, <laughs> until this year. Well, then I think she has, she definitely has priority to do that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thankfully, my dad does not complain. I know I'm kind of rambling. He doesn't complain about it being too warm in the basement in the summer because sometimes I think it is too warm down there. Because we run the um, dehumidifier, and then right. that the process of that spews kind of warm air. So anyway, all right. So let's get on with the knitting. <laughs> <laughs> you can cut that part out. Um, see, this is what happens when we don't like catch up with each other. We talk about random stuff like heating and air conditioning. So because we both live in old houses. <laughs> um, okay, it's getting warm in here. All right. Um, let's see. So we are having a cow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Our petite knit cow is running and it started October 1st, but we had our cast on party on October 3rd mm -hmm. separately. I was at home um, and Kim was here with Karen and Felicia mm -hmm. and I zoomed in because I had COVID, but I was feeling fine. So um, yeah, so our petite knit cow, it runs through January 1st, 2024 whips are welcome we don't really have any rules other than pick a petite knit pattern and we chose petite knit because not only do we both really like it and they knit a lot of petite knit patterns here in the shop but you know she has handbags and pillows and children's things men's things women's mm -hmm. things all hats and accessories, accessories yeah. and all kinds of things so we thought it was a nice um kind of big category uh so everyone could join in. Yeah. There's already uh, lots of Sophie scarves. Yeah. And Sophie shawls, yeah. which is so fun. I haven't knit one yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, someone, speaking of Sophie, and I'll get back to the cow in a sec, but speaking of the Sophie scarf or shawl, um, you make increases every X number of rows. And I thought it was the cutest thing. Somebody mentioned, you know those um, fidget popper things mm -hmm. that kids play with she uses the fidget popper to count her rows she pops she, she has pops one with the bubble how many repeats how many it's rows for a repeat i don't know if i should say okay yeah but, but whatever it is a, that's how long her yeah, thing is so yes she just pops a bubble every time she does a row and i thought <laughs> oh another way for me to potentially keep track of my rows yeah yeah but i still love my twice sheared sheep yeah row counter yeah love that thing but um, if you want to watch the cast on party, <laughs> we had a little technology issue. Uh, we Zoomed it live, and then we recorded the Zoom, mm -hmm. and then we aired it the next day. But we were ha like, I don't know, th 40 minutes in time-wise, but really when we started, 30 minutes in. And I looked at my laptop, which I wasn't using or touching. Just it was filming us, and the record was not on. Ugh. 
And I'm sitting there for a few seconds while people are talking, thinking, <laughs> should I stop everybody and turn it and rec hit record, or should I just not, not worry about it and we won't have a video? But I decided to stop everybody. Yeah, and it turned out line, so... Yeah, so you can go ahead and watch that. We had a good time. Yeah, we'll put a link above Jonna's head. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and so the there is a Ravelry group. Um, so if you go to Knit Together with Kim and Jonna, underneath that there is a discussion thread for the cow. And I just today put in an FO thread because people are already wanting to know where to post their finished object pictures. Yay! So you can post them on Ravelry. You can post them on Instagram, and we're using the hashtag KNJPK for Petite Knit Cal, K-A-L, so there's two K's in there. And people asked, it's K-A-N-D-J-P-K-K-A-L. <laughs> yeah, I just kind of took our Mayak Cal hashtag right. and switched it to Petite Knit. So. And I think the reason people had questions in the cast on party is because we did not put... Um, what are they called? Ca um, oh, captions? Captions, yeah, in. captions in them. And it was in the show notes. Mm -hmm. um, and also on the last video we did, oh, catching up with each other. Mm -hmm. That was fun. It was so fun. It was so fun. Thank you for all your sweet comments, yes. too. We just kind of, you know, you were going to come over anyway. We hadn't seen each other in like a month. Like, seriously. Yeah. And, I mean, I thought we were just going to have a chat on the deck and then, you know, she brought notes. But... <laughs> I bring notes so, everywhere. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So I actually brought something for you today. Did I talk about the – am I done with the cow? Did I say everything? So it, it begins and ends. We have um, the Ravelry group, any petite knit, any yarn. Yes. I think we're set. Yes. And we will have prizes. We will have prizes. Uh -huh. I was just thinking since we're allowing whips and if people – I don't want people to worry if they're not finished by January. Maybe right. we can have an FO prize. We can have a whip prize. Yeah. We can have a Ravelry prize. We can have an Instagram prize. Mm -hmm. So we kind of cover everybody. Yeah. Cover all the bases. Okay. Great. Um, so I do – so in our catching up video because I didn't organize anything – um, it was very forgot, last minute, very last minute that I we even forgot to give you something I got for you in, um, at McKinney Knittery. Oh, when you were down in Texas. Yeah. What does it say? Love. Love and it. Love and love and it. I get it. <laughs> McKinney Knittery, downtown McKinney, Texas. And you Great. love to wear t-shirts with and v-neck. And it's v-neck. Oh my goodness. And You're so like, I, I saw that. And I thought, my oh, bestie. You, would, you would totally wear that. <laughs> So, I love it. Yeah. So um, since our so last much. podcast, I went to Texas. So I went to McKinney Knittery one day, and I went to the DFW Fiber Fest. Nice. Yeah, which was really fun. So I met a lot of viewers, and I brought my mom along, and I saw absolutely no yarn. I, I'm kind of bummed. I didn't really look at yarn. I just met people and just talked to people, and I saw um, Max and Vincent from Lake Arson, and they were... Um, Oh, they were down in Texas? Yeah. Oh, fun. Yeah, and they asked me what to do in Texas. I was like, oh, I don't know, like go to Billy Bob. Eat Roadhouse. What's your favorite? Barbecue. One? My favorite barbecue is Marty B's oh. um, in Bartonville, but I don't know. Tex-Mex or barbecue. Yeah. I said, you can eat. Like, that's, that's what I do when I go to Texas. <laughs> that's what I would do. I seriously do. eat. So. Um, and then Fort Worth is fun because it's very uh, Western, like you can buy cowboy boots. Of course, I haven't been there in a long time, but cowboy boots and cowboy hats and stuff and go to Billy Bob's and listen to country music. So <laughs> anyway, but they were there showing off their new fluff yarn. So, um, oh, this whole basket is gorgeous. I'm yeah. just going to bring it here. Look so it's this. a sport weight, maybe alpaca, a picture of it. Um, merino wool, mulberry, mulberry silk, yak, 100% dreamy. So yeah, I agree they, with that. Yeah, they were um, showcasing this at, wow. at the DFW Fiber Fest. So, so beautiful. Yeah, and then I um, only stayed for a couple hours, and I hopped on a plane and came home. Nice. Yeah, and then I was home for one day, and I my dad booked a cruise for his 90th birthday, and this was like I don't know three months ago, and I'd never been on a cruise, and I thought, oh yeah, that sounds fun, you know, and as long as. I can see land. Like, that was my thing. I just want to go up the East Coast. So we were um, scheduled to go to Halifax and stop in, what, uh, Newport, Rhode Island, Portland, Maine, Bar Harbor, Maine, St. John, New Brunswick, and Halifax, Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. And so um, I wasn't entirely sure we were actually going, but I got home and, 
you know, the next day I just basically had to do laundry and pack and get ready for this cruise. So, um, yeah. So then I went to more yarn shops and we were traveling and, um, you know, today I actually Googled the Oxford dictionary, the correct pronunciation of skein, S K E I N is skein with a long A with a bar over the A skein. Yeah. Yeah. Not skein. No, it's skein. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure it was skein because one of the stores I stopped in, um, on a trip to Rhode Island was called skein and I actually bought things there, which I'll show <laughs> at the end. But anyway, I wanted to make sure I was saying that correctly. So, um, all right. In this video, mm -hmm. we are celebrating 15,000 subscribers. And it was, <laughs> we should have brought party hats. <laughs> or, five, I know. I know. Um, it was so funny because we were like checking our phones every few minutes, it felt like, just to get that one subscriber, that one subscriber to go over 15,000 or to get to 15,000. And ever since then, it's been like, oh, we got, you know. We're now doing, we're at 15.3. know, it just crawled to 15,000. So thank you to everyone. <laughs> you know, I confess that maybe I was somewhere and I said, oh, we have a YouTube channel. And she goes, oh, go. well, I can subscribe. I'm like, are you an editor? She's like, no. I'm like, no, I don't want to cheat. I just yeah. want to, like, get it for real. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. But um, so, yeah, we made it to 15,000 subscribers. We did. So, so exciting. I know. And this is the first time we've really had a chance to talk about it on, on camera really so crazy yeah. so thank you so much mm -hmm. to our members all the subscribers and all the people who leave comments that we love to read and respond to mm -hmm. and, and every person who's subscribed i mean we would not hit it unless you subscribe so no. No. um really and i don't that. i'm kind of picky and choosy i don't subscribe to many youtube channels yeah. so I know it's kind of a big deal. You then you get all these notifications. And speaking of when we hit fifteen thousand or when we hit any milestone, I don't know if when you're watching it, you notice it goes up a little, and then it goes back down, mm -hmm. then it goes up again, and mm -hmm. then back down. So at least now we're solidly over fifteen. Over fifteen, yes. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see it go below fifteen. Um, it, it, it does. 15, yeah, it does. Oh, yeah. Okay. Then it'll hit fourteen and then oh, ninety eight, okay. and it, it it fluctuates. So I'm glad we waited until we're oh, okay. solidly there. But anyway, oh, go no, ahead. No, 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 go ahead. You talk about the comments. Okay. okay. But we are going to have. Um, we we were thinking we should, you know, uh, have a, a. I hate to use the word G I V E. <laughs> A W A Y, mm -hmm. and the reason I'm spelling it is because there are bots that search for that word. Yes, that word, and then they spam mm -hmm. your comments. So we're not going to say it. I'll put it in the captions. But um, and John, I thought I don't want to just give one prize to one person for fifteen thousand subscribers. That doesn't seem quite fair. Um, or generous. Um, so what we decided to do is to represent each thousand, we're going to choose, what you have to do is comment mm -hmm. below this video, mm -hmm. any comment. Any comment. So even if you don't want to be in the, get a prize. Uh, you can just write comment. Exactly. <laughs> um, so comment below and then, then we will draw 15 winners. And what those winners will win is a Zoom with us, a Zoom party, a mm -hmm. 15,000 subscriber Zoom party. Mm -hmm. And then while we're in the party, then we'll also do some little prizes. Mm -hmm. So that's it. There will be 15 winners. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about memberships, but we do have channel memberships. And the reason it came to mind was because we every month we do a Zoom with our Cable 3 members. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so which is the highest tier. So they've kind of become our... Our knitting group. So. Yeah, our monthly knitting group. It's yeah. really fun. Yeah, so that's why we thought of the Zoom because it's just really a lot of fun for us. And, um, you know, whether we're knitting or talking about our projects or, um, you know, you can ask us anything, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And um, with those, we alternate every three months. One month we'll do uh, middle of the week, daytime. That's easiest for us. Mm -hmm. And then once a uh, the next month we might do evening because it's easier for other people but harder for us. And then on the third month, we'll do the weekend, which, you know, we kind of like to save our weekends for our families and our husbands, but we will do that once every three yeah, months. Because we have viewers from Spain yeah. and um, Australia, New Zealand. Yeah. So maybe yeah. when we do the 15,000 subscriber Zoom party, we can do it on a weekend. So yeah, we'll try more to people. make it, you know, maybe early for some and late for others. Mm -hmm. and, and we'll give yeah. you plenty of notice. Yeah. Sometimes with the cable threes. Like this last month, you were oh, sick. Yeah, it was for the moment. It was crazy. It was very last minute. But we yeah. had more people than we've ever had. Yeah. 
You had what? Did, how many did we have? 14 or something? I don't know. Yeah, anyway. She's the one who writes all that stuff down. <laughs> I write everything down. <laughs> she makes fun of me. But. I know, even my husband makes fun of me. Like, I don't write anything down. He's like, but I have a stress-free life because I have this to-do list. And, you know, it's true. I really, I really should do that. Yeah, I just like to clear it out of my brain. If it's yeah, written down, I don't have to think of it anymore. Yeah, I know. So um, <laughs> I do want to say a quick, um, in, in our um, catching up with each other, I got to talk about Lunenburg, but I want to say hi to all my new Lunenburg friends. <laughs> I had so much fun in Lunenburg, Nova Scotia. If you want to hear, you know, most of my trip, not all of it, that would have taken hours. <laughs> <laughs> it already did. I thought it was funny when someone wrote a comment and said, Johnny, you said you needed to make dinner, and then the video went on for another hour. I know. <laughs> that was really before I even... I want to say I did make dinner. I made chicken. And I did potatoes, too. Potatoes and asparagus, I nice. think. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I miss all of you in Lunenburg. I had so much fun. If you want to hear about uh, my trip up there where I got to meet our member, uh, Carmen, Karen. <gasps> Hi, Karen. She's back in Spain now. Mm. That was so fun. And then... When we um, got there, my first stop was the Mariner's Daughter, which is a great little yarn shop in Lunenburg. The owners are ha Hannah and Faye. And um, so if you want to hear about that, definitely go back to our Catching Up With Each Other video. And then I also, one of my favorite things, must see also, destination is Gasparo Valley Fibers. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk mm -hmm. about that a tiny bit. And a little bit later, and um, a viewer had just moved to Lunenburg a month before, mm -hmm. so I got to meet her, Michelle, and her husband, Attila, and I forgot to mention, the day, the morning I met her and her husband, I didn't realize that her husband was going to come until the last minute, and I let my husband sleep, and her husband is a photographer, oh. so we were lamenting the fact that he wasn't there, so the next night, the night before we left, we met them to see the sunset from mm. a nearby beach, mm -hmm. so that was really fun, and uh, our husbands do have a lot in common, so <laughs> so that was really cool, nice. and I also, uh, what else, did get to... oh. This is technically a finished object, but I'm not really going to talk about it. But the viewer, Rachel from Halifax, who finished my frog, I got to meet her. I know, and I didn't because our cruise didn't quite make it to Halifax because of the weather. Yeah, we were all set. Yeah. That, well, first I was going to meet Rachel in the middle Saturday, but then a hurricane hit Nova Scotia. Yeah, I don't know. Crazy <laughs> coincidence. So then I decided to meet her the day Jonna's ship was going to be in Halifax, but then Jonna ended up not being able to go because of another storm. Oh, my goodness. Was fortuitous because my dad already had COVID at that point. Yeah. I'm pretty so. sure. So it was a good thing. Would have given it to all of us. <laughs> yeah. He was staying in the cabin by he then. He was. He was. Yeah. yeah. But thank you so much, Rachel, for finishing my frog. He's so cute. I did put the eyes on. Now I just have to knit him something. Where do you find the sweater patterns to knit the frogs? Um, on her. Oh, he's going to fall down. On her website, Dot Pebbles, um, Claire Garland. She has a sweater <laughs> pattern. get him to stand up now. Um, and Kate from... The Knitting Posse. If you don't watch them, you should. Um, she, I think she did the frog for one of her knitting classes. She mm -hmm. teaches knitting. And she wrote the frog sweater pattern to be knit in the round. So um, so originally it's not? Yeah, originally it's knitted flat. And I thought it was super cool construction. And I didn't mind knitting it flat. It's tiny. It's so itty bitty. But it's flat with one seam, right? Isn't think, it? Didn't you say no, that? No, I think there were seams. Oh, up seams and down, everywhere. Oh, okay. The arms and everything. Oh, nice. Yeah. But um, it turned out so cute. Oh, that's so cute. So, but Yeah, so I got to meet Rachel. That was Yay. so fun. We definitely missed you. We, we uh, FaceTimed. That mm -hmm. was the time you were on the ship. Okay. We FaceTimed you that time. And I wasn't sure that that would work, but it did. It did work. Yeah. So we FaceTimed her. And then I also, on the way home, I got to meet Roxanne. She met me, met my husband and I in St. John for dinner. That was really fun. I just got to meet so many people. So thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I miss you all. I thought I would be able to knit on this and talk at the same time because this is the wrong side. All right. Well, we should talk about what we're wearing. Yeah, let's get to the and, knitting. Um, and I didn't mention that there will be timestamps below. And if you've already listened to all of this, sorry about that. But there are timestamps below where you can uh, click ahead to the various categories. Of, right. What do I want to say? Not categories. like uh, Sections. Yeah, sections. <laughs> <laughs> sections is good. Let's go with sections. Yeah. Yes. Nice. So do you want to start? Uh, you want me to start? Yeah. Okay. We're both sure. wearing the same sweater. We are. Yeah. Did you notice that before we said anything? 
<laughs> because it almost looks like a different sweater, but it does, and we'll talk about why. Yeah. Actually, we can talk about them kind of in tandem. How's okay. that sound? Sure. So I'll pick up my notes though, because I need notes. I cannot talk about things without notes. Where did I put my notes? Oh, here they are. <laughs> and for me, I knit this sweater pre-Ravelry. I want to say uh, in the first year of knitting. So yes. I didn't write anything down. I had a paper pattern. I probably have notes on my paper pattern that's somewhere. Who knows? Mm -hmm. I probably, I don't even know what size I made. Yeah. Probably the second size I typically do. So, probably. Uh, yeah. yeah. But that's okay. It's fine. I, you know, there's many, many, many of my sweaters are not in Ravelry, so I would have no idea if I ever talk about any of them. I won't know any details. How much ease is intended? In this? Mm -hmm. The Two inches. Oh, okay. So this is the Lunenberg Pullover by Amy Christophers, mm -hmm. aka Savory Knitting, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, I it was already in my it was already in my queue because you had knit yours mm -hmm. and it's gorgeous. Okay. And two years ago, when we were at New York Sheep and Wool, mm -hmm. I bought yarn at Green Mountain Spinnery mm -hmm. at their booth. And I wanted to make one. That was two years ago. And then it went in my queue of sweaters. Then when I knew for sure I was going to Lunenburg mm -hmm. uh, last month, I wanted to knit it. And I wanted it to be finished by then, mm -hmm. but it wasn't. But that's okay because the first week we were there, it was crazy hot. Mm -hmm. And then even the second week, it wasn't really sweater weather. Anyway, mine is knit in Green Mountain Spinnery. I just touched the microphone. Oh, oops. <laughs> um, Lana two ply fingering. It's 100% fine wool, and my main color is Borrasca. They're all Spanish names, mm. Borrasca. And I did use four hanks of Borrasca, and I only had a little bit left. And where is it? Here. Are they 50 grams gains? I can't remember. Okay. You always ask me these details that I don't oh, write sorry. down. <laughs> sorry. No, I think they must be 100. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, and then my other four. Colors are uh, ancho, ancho, I guess, mm -hmm. if I'm going to continue the Spanish theme, <laughs> bahia, blanca, and rosada. Mm -hmm. I love rolling my R's, rosada. <laughs> so those are all of my colors. And this is, I only got one of each, of course, and I have tons left. So I'm thinking I could knit a really cute color work hat. Wouldn't it be fun to create a hat with this oh, yeah. design? Oh, I keep touching my Because the repeat's actually really small. Right. Yeah. That would be fun. So maybe I'll try to oh, do that. Oh, so I use this kind of greenish, dark green blue. Mm -hmm. So my main color is like your light blue. And what's your yarn? Do you remember? Yes. It is Nash Island Tide uh, by Starcroft Fibers. And I bought it at Rhinebeck. Mm -hmm. Maybe 2019. Not with you, I don't mm -mm. think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, it's one of my favorite booths. We always go. Um, in fact, Amy Palco asked for suggestions on her last podcast of, um, you know, booths to visit, and I suggested that. So they have just gorgeous yarn. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I alternated skeins for mine because you can see that there's a little bit of pooling. It is hand-dyed. Um, yeah, so go ahead. Continue. Yeah, no, it's great. So let's see. Obviously, this is one of my finished objects then. Mm -hmm. Yours was finished years yes. ago. Yes. <laughs> and, okay, as I got started knitting, and I still have more things to talk about, but I was knitting my yoke, and I'm texting John and saying, I can't believe you knit this the first year you were a knitter. There are, first of all, multiple colors. In The maximum is two per row, but sometimes in the two-color rows, you're also doing the knitting and purling. It's kind of in the theme of bohu stickening. Yes. And I did look up Bohu Stickney in case you haven't heard of it. If you haven't heard of it, you need to just go watch Fruity Knitting episode right. 112 because <laughs> that's where I heard about it in the mm -hmm. first place. But if, if we had taken the light color mm -hmm. and used Angora yarn, mm -hmm. it really would be like Bohu Stickney. But Bohu Stickney uh, was a project that started in 1939. It ran from 39 to 69, and then it had kind of had a um, a renewal. And... It was an initiative from by Emma Jacobson in Sweden, and a lot of the patterns were developed by her, and there's just famous patterns. And they, they had a group of women to help support them during a time when there was high unemployment and hardship. And so they created these, they knit these sweaters. Mm -hmm. They didn't just sell, they didn't sell patterns. Wow. They created they the patterns, the and this group of women knit the sweaters, and then they sold them 
both in Sweden and internationally, and they became famous, world famous, these sweaters. Wow. So, yeah, so amazing. So definitely go watch Fruity Knitting episode 112. I think I, that's what I wrote down, if you want to know more about Bohu Stickning. But um, it's basically a top-down, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm trying to be like Jana. She does this all the time, and I never do. I don't do. even know what she's talking about. You always say, <laughs> it's a top-down, mm -hmm. in-the-round, mm -hmm. circular yoke sweater, mm -hmm. has a one-by-one -one rib, mm -hmm. um, and then after the yoke, it has short rows, you divide, and then you do the body, the rib, and the sleeves. Basically, Jana usually gives you a rundown of the construction of the sweater, and I, I love it when you do that. Yeah. yeah. Didn't even know. You do. <laughs> Especially when we're talking about patterns that we love that we haven't knit before. Oh, you kind okay. of, and I never do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm, again, trying to um, channel my inner Jana. <laughs> <laughs> now, it calls for, it's suggested needle is a US 3 and 5, or a 3.25 millimeter and a 3.75 millimeter. You don't remember what you knit on. Probably what I it called for. I knit on what it called for. Okay. And I swatched. And I wish I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and I swatched and I ended up using a US 5 for the rib and a 7 for the rest of it. And I did swatch in the round. And I think this is the last time I'm going to swatch in the round. Karen and I were talking about this. I think my gauge is the same whether I swatch flat or in the round. I'm just I mean, kind if of. If you knit to the circumference of the needle, which you do, mm -hmm. then it probably doesn't make any right. difference. Right, because even when I switch, yeah. in, this was not flat and in the round, but when I'm doing something flat and then do the sleeves, they're basically the same. But I did swatch in the round and I started with the suggested needle, I always do. Even though I know I'm usually going to go up, mm. what if that one time. <laughs> My gauge is the same, and I skipped that one. So mm -hmm. I did swatch with uh, a 5, a 6, a 7, and an 8, a US 5, 6, 7, and 8. The suggested gauge was 24 stitches per 4 inches, and I got 24.5 mm. before I blocked it and 23.5 after I blocked it. Mm. So I assumed that was fine with the US 7. Uh, so why do you wish you had gone down a needle size? Because I, when I first started to knit, I didn't wrap the yarn around my pinky and just add that little bit of tension. I was a crocheter before I was a knitter, and I think I was just holding the yarn in my hand. And so my tension, I was a loose knitter. And I was, you know, excited and couldn't wait to cast on and thought gauge swatching was just ridiculous. And I don't know what I thought. Um, I thought that for 30 years. Yeah. I haven't been swatching that long. I don't know. I thought I just trust the pattern and just do what it says and I have the right weight of yarn and um, I just didn't know as much as I do now. So my sweater, I probably knit this, I don't know, second size, I'm just guessing. And my bust measurement, I measured it right before we started filming, is 43 inches. So, and you know, we were talking about this in our previous episode, the fall episode, I think maybe, mm -hmm. about your high bust measurement and your full bust measurement. And is that how you pick a sweater, from your high bust measurement? Didn't you say that Hohe suggests Suggest you your pick it from your high, high bust, bust and then you can add bust starts and or extra stitches under the sleeve to accommodate your full bust once you if get there. If it's more than if there's, three well, inches? Yeah, I mean, if difference. there's more than two an inch difference between your high bust and your full bust, you could add bust starts, but either way, you can add extra stitches. So you can stitch the yoke mm -hmm. to the high bust, and then you can add stitches to switch to the full bust size. I probably picked a size arms. based on my full bust, which is 36, and then I had a loose gauge. And, you know, at that point, I probably thought, oh, one stitch off, that's not a big deal. But when you've got, you know, 200 and something stitches, mm -hmm. that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. So um, that and the fabric is... I would like it to be a little bit denser. That said, it's so lightweight. Yeah. I'm not even warm. Um, you know, it's a pleasure to wear. It's, it's definitely rustic wool, but it's not scratchy. Um, Back then, too, as far as gauge goes, you didn't, now you even check your gauge while you're knitting. You didn't yes, do that then, did no, you? No, no. Um, you know, and I'm not even sure. You know, you start out knitting the yoke, and so you're not knitting stockinette. Right, you wouldn't be able to check the so gauge. So I wouldn't be able to check my gauge until I got to the plain stockinette part. And by then, you know. Would you really rip it would out? Would I really rip it out? And I don't think I had the knitting wisdom to mm -hmm. know that I could add fewer stitches underneath the arms. You know, that kind of thing. In fact, last, just last night, um, <laughs> I 
kind of stitched a du- duplicate stitch to close a hole mm-hmm. um, at the you know the join at the two corners mm-hmm. when you join underneath the arms. Um, and then for a long time, I want to say months, I had this big. So the beginning of round is on the right shoulder, I want to say. Back right, it is. Back right, mm-hmm. back right shoulder. So I had this big, I called it like a yarn monkey, like underneath Inside the sweater. Like I was like um, Quasimodo. Because you never wove the ends in. Yeah, Notre Dame, that um, opera. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I never wove my ends in. But because I've worn it so much, I just cut them to be an inch long and they felted. Yeah. So I never wove my ends in. Yeah. And they're still not woven in. So, yeah. I mean, this yarn is super sticky. Um, yeah. So mine is, what's your bust measurement on yours? Yeah. So let me just say this first. There are eight sizes in the pattern, because Jonna would say this, <laughs> um, from a finished bust of 35 to 62 inches. And the picture, it doesn't really say what the suggested ease is. Hmm. The woman in the picture has supposedly two inches of ease. Mm. I chose the fourth size. So you chose... The second size. Maybe I chose even the first size. I'm not sure. And what was the finished bust supposed to be on that one? Do you know? No. Okay. I didn't write all that down. I chose the fourth size and the finished bust was supposed to be 46 inches. Oh my goodness. My fingernails are still blue. (laughs) Uh, Obviously, I got my hair done again and it drives me nuts that it turns my fingernails blue. And I... Does that happen when you wash your hair? When I touch my hair, when I wash my hair. I just... Yeah, I just washed it today. Anyway, I'm just seeing them. I'm going to hide my hands. So... I chose the 46-inch bust, finished bust, and I my finished bust measurement is 47. So yours, you said, is? 43. 43. I mean, she's much tinier than I so am. So it should have been, you know, I should have been around 38 inches. I mean, I have the pattern here. I can take a peek. I usually don't bend down and look at stuff. So if you if you did the first size... Would have been a finished 35-inch bust. So I probably did the second size, which is a 38. So you can see how much of a difference just one stitch off. Oh, right, because you ended up with a 43. I did. Mm -hmm. So I ended up with a third size. Mm -hmm. Um, There you go. Another thing we just want to note is, and and they noticed it right when we walked in, even row gauge. Mm -hmm. I don't really check my row gauge. I just measure. But if you can see how much deeper your yoke is as opposed to my yoke mm-hmm. and your neck is much wide. I feel like it's wider, but you're thinner. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, it's so interesting, Yeah, right? my yoke goes, you know, to my full bust and below. And below, actually, where, your, right? where your bra would so stop. So, obviously, my row cage was also It's off. beautiful, though, and, and okay. It is a beautiful sweater. Everybody has to comment and tell Jonna she has to wear the sweater because she <laughs> never wears it. It's gorgeous. It's it's more of a boxy fit. Yeah, and I think if the... the Fabric is a little stiff, not because of the gauge, but just it's it's just rustic wool. So it's yeah. not very drapey. So I guess it's super boxy. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do love it, and it's a beautiful pattern. It's so beautiful. It's an absolutely beautiful pattern. Yeah. So is it six colors total or five colors total? Five colors. Okay. Um, and if you like color work, I highly recommend um, knitting it. It is just it's just, just beautiful. It is. Yeah. Now there are mistakes in the pattern. Yes. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. Um and by the <laughs> way I, I didn't even notice that there were mistakes. So that's another thing I was experience. texting her. I mean they were you <laughs> a, a knitter would first of all you might just not even realize because you kind of read and fix mistakes in your head, right? Mm-hmm. But um uh yeah there's and actually I printed the pattern two years ago. So when mm. I saw the mistakes in the previous pattern, mm-hmm. I opened it up to see if there were any updates. new updates. I didn't mm-hmm. find any. And so mm-hmm. I looked at the current one on Ravelry and they're still in there. Basically, when you're first casting on and putting in your beginning of round marker, it says that that beginning of round marker should be at the back left shoulder. And that is not correct. It's actually, it doesn't matter because you're just going to keep knitting the pattern. Mm-hmm. But uh, it ends up being the back right shoulder, not the back left. Because then I was reading ahead a little bit and it wasn't making sense. I finally figured it out. And then another silly little silly little mistake. But when you do the first, uh, when you're separating for the sleeves and body, it says put these stitches on hold for the left sleeve, knit across, and then put these sleeves, stitches on hold for the left sleeve. Mm. So it should just say, it's the first one is actually the right sleeve. Mm. And then this. Is that correct? And then the other one is the left sleeve. Anyway, silly little mistakes. Uh, but that might matter when you're doing short rows. It might just make make it confusing for you as well. Mm-hmm. It just if you're trying to imagine it in your head and you mm-hmm. think that's the back right 
um, shoulder. Mm -hmm. It just it can be confusing. Yeah. So just keep that in mind if you're going to knit it. Otherwise, it's very easy to follow. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, yeah, I kept texting John. I can't believe you knit this. Mm -hmm. It's a really thin, narrow chart. First of all, it's a chart for the color work. And it's a very narrow chart. And you have to do the increases as well. And I was just amazed that John knit this as a new knitter. I think it's just that you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And ignorance is bliss. Yeah. yeah. So if you're a new knitter, don't be intimidated. Just if you want the object, yeah. obviously you wanted the finished object. Yes. I yeah. thought it was really unique color work. Mm -hmm. Really interesting and It's different. really, really beautiful. Yeah. So I started it on uh, September 2nd and finished it on September 26th. Oh, wow. That's crazy. <laughs> crazy fast. 24 days, I guess. Uh... Let's see. I really knit it as is, except instead of German short rows, I did, I'm sorry, instead of wrap and turns, I did German short rows, mm -hmm. and I did an Italian sewn bind off, which mm -hmm. we both do all the time now, because mm -hmm. you didn't do one on that, because no. you didn't know how to do it yet. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, so the finished measurements, my finished measurements are chest bust 47 inches, length from the underarm 13.25 inches, and the sleeve length from underarm 18 inches. It's beautiful. Yeah, and you don't know, I mean... I have no idea. That's okay. <laughs> that was before you put everything in Ravelry yeah, in before all and that. I could go back and measure. But. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, we. How many minutes in are we? And I we know. Really covered what we're wearing. That's in one, okay. One FO. That's okay. So what's next? Um, I do have some FOs. Go for it. Um, one that I didn't bring, it which is my Audrey top. So I finished it before our cow started, though. So it's the Audrey Top by Petite Knit, and I knit the second size. And if you watched our last episode, I was knitting on um, on it during the episode using Lang Lino. And it's a tape yarn. It's 100% linen tape yarn, and it was twisting. And I did ask for lots of advice and got lots of advice. Um, but as soon as the episode ended, I frogged it. I just yanked that thing out. Um, literally as, after literally it ended. as we were wrapping That's up. That's so funny. Um, I ripped it out. So I don't know if I just purchased uh, the yarn that I ended up using or if I had it at home. I can't remember. But it's Isayer Hoor Organic. And you'll put in a picture. Mm -hmm. um, and I absolutely love, love, love this top. Um, a few podcasters have made it. And I have seen it come down quite low underneath... Um, the arm mm -hmm. so much so that if you wore a strapless bra it would show um i did not have that problem uh i got gauged i held the whore organic double uh and i knit it in black it's 100 percent linen and it was fine to knit that yarn double mm -hmm. um it's pretty stiff yarn but it has softened up and it's become super drapey and um Let's see. What else? Let's see. You cast on so it's bottom up. And I cast on on wooden needles. I only, I think because my metal needles may have been in use or mm -hmm. something. And just those first couple rows are a little bit loose. And it's probably only something, it's definitely only something I would notice. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, you know, I wish that they were snug with the cast on. But it's just got a rolled edge cast on. Mm -hmm. And then you just start knitting. So it's an awesome um, vacation knit or social knitting, TV knitting, and you knit to the underarms, and then you bind off some stitches, and then you just start decreasing up to the um, neck. So you knit the front and the back separately, and then you knit some I-cord straps. And I knit the I-cord straps to uh, what the pattern suggested. Mm -hmm. And I think the whole organic actually is what is suggested in the pattern, what the sample's knit in. Oh, nice. Um, and it's funny funny no funny but I went to go put it on to show my husband for the first time and I could barely get it over my head I think I, I had a ponytail which I normally do I had to take my glasses off take my ponytail out and you know cinch it over my head because we Not did cinch the opposite of cinch we already Wiggle it over a, my head. a picture but it has kind of a high neck and then the straps go from kind of narrow yes it's like a racer back Yes. Yes, in the front and the back. But you just bind off the stitches in the front and the back. Um, you just bind off. And I noticed a few of the projects on Ravelry where those the front and the back um, sagged. Mm -hmm. uh, it looked maybe like those stitches were loose and, 
I didn't want that, so I bound off very tightly because I wanted it to just lay flat. Mm -hmm. And I love the way it looks. However, I should have made the straps maybe half an inch longer, but it, it goes on and it's mm -hmm. fine. It, I love the way it sits up very high. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely, you know, shows off your shoulders. Oh, it looks and so beautiful on you. And I just, I really, really love it. So um, one thing I did want to mention, or like 10 things I wanted to mention, <laughs> which is I used the... Uh, linen yarn join uh, the magic knot that I saw from Mel Make Stuff. And if you don't watch Mel Make Stuff, you definitely should watch Mel Make Stuff because she's amazing. She does a lot of garment knit, um, modifications and she's a very technical knitter. I always learn a, um, a ton. So she has a video and I'll link it below. And I've linked it several times, I think. Mm -hmm. um, plant based yarn, different joins. Right. And I've used that video a number of times. Um, and in fact, on the Ravelry page for the Whore Organic, it even says this yarn may bias. And it said that right on the manufacturer's webpage. And I thought, oh gosh, please let that not be a thing after mm -hmm. I had the, t the twisting of the tape yarn. It did not bias at all. Oh, well. So I just want to say that go ahead and, and knit um, with that linen yarn because it was just great. So, um, let's see. Oh, <laughs> so the yarn, so I have white bedding and I often knit in bed and I noticed there was just a lot of black uh, linen in my bed. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was, happened to be getting my nails done. The girls and I went on a vacation and, um, I, I picked the cheapest thing on the spa menu and it was a <laughs> manicure. <laughs> so I got a manicure and it was the best manicure of my life. But the, the manicurist uh, said, gosh, your cuticles are super dry. And uh, we had talked about knitting and um, that I had a knitting channel and whatever. And she said, you know, I always wash my hands before I pick up my knitting, but I never wash my hands after I'm done knitting. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, you always have to wash your hands after you're done knitting and then moisturize your cuticles because the yarn, the fibers of the yarn mm -hmm. um, dry out your cuticles. Right. So there's your um, fingernail tip for the day. And, um, yeah, so that's about it. So, Thank you. Anyway, I absolutely love it. I'm so glad I made it. It was a quick knit, too. It probably only took me two weeks. It's really gorgeous. Yeah. And if we have a warm day at Rhinebeck, you can wear that. I know. You can wear it. Throw a jacket over it or a blouse a or something. jean top, mm -hmm. um, button-down yeah. top or something. Yeah. It's really cute. Yeah. One thing I wanted to mention, I've wanted to mention it a few times, but I keep forgetting. Remember when I finished my sparkle cardigan and I said in my one-by-one one rib that I had, uh, what's it called? Uh, laddering. Mm -hmm. Because I because of magic um, loop. Magic loop. Mm -hmm. And I, I try, you know, with my magic loop staying where it is, I try, you know, pulling tight and everything and it never works. Mm -hmm. But you suggested that I move over mm. a couple... You just travel? Yes. Did you travel? I travel now every Ooh. single time, and yeah. I have no laddering. And I'm lazy oh. every time I don't want to do it. Right. <laughs> but I think, nope, I don't want laddering. Not that it matters. Nobody ever notices. Who mm -hmm. cares? But now I'll do the first row, and then whatever the repeat is, if it's one by one rib, then I'll... The next time, I won't knit the, the last two stitches, mm -hmm. and I'll pull them to the other side, and then I'll... Mm -hmm. So I do it every row, or if it's three by two, then I, you know... Just every. as long as you use the stitch marker for your end of round. Exactly. Yeah. And I use my twice sheared sheet row counter as mm. my beginning end yeah. of round, and that works perfectly. Perfect. Yeah. So now I don't have any laddering. Thank you so much for your right. suggestion. <laughs> Speaking of ribbing, so I started for our cow the vertical stripe sweater, mm -hmm. and it's a four by four rib. And you know how that last column of knit stitches can look wonky before your pearls, right? Mm -hmm. Because your yarn is having to travel the greatest distance from your knit stitch to your purl stitch. Well, in an effort to, and, and I could twist that first purl stitch and it probably wouldn't show. Mm -hmm. um, but what I've decided to do, and now I can't remember if this is a Patty Lyon suggestion. If I remember, I'll put it in the show notes. Um, so what I do... She does make a suggestion in her book, but I don't remember what okay, it is. Okay, so I knit the knit stitch normally, and then I put my needle in as if to purl, but don't purl, and then I pull my working yarn snug. Mm. So that has seemed to, to help that. So I don't know if that'll be helpful to anybody. Um, now, I have used combination, also, combination knitting also. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, there's a few ways to fix it. Yeah, so I'm, my columns are pretty straight, so I'm happy about that. Nice. Yeah. Cool. So, so that was your Audrey top by yes, Petite, Petite Knit. Right. So I'll just do a quick whip. It's going to be super fast. Uh, not a whip, I'm sorry, a finished object. I was almost finished. I was knitting on my mom's papillon shawl in episode 21, and I did finish it shortly thereafter. And I absolutely love it. It's the Papillon by Marin Melchior, a.k.a. Marinja Knits. And I got this kit. I bought it online from Knit This Pearl That in Livermore, California. And I think I had asked if people know of the shop, and people had responded, and I did get in touch with them. And they are there. I think they had closed for a little while over COVID, and they are reopened. So if you're going to be in Livermore, California, or nearby, definitely visit Knit This Pearl That. But they had these kits, and the yarn is Earth Yarns Unique Fingering. It's 100% extra fine, super wash merino. And the color is 3004. We did have a viewer email us and ask. The color is 3004. I used two of those, but the second one I barely used, and we'll talk about why in just a second. And I, the kit came with, uh, what was it, Charlemont Valley Yarns and the black, one of those, and that's this, and I think it's a webs yarn. Charlemont Valley is made for webs or something like that, so I have that much of one of those. So when I finished this, I, I did not do a gauge swatch. I just used the needle that was suggested, mm. and so obviously because I'm a tighter knitter, the shawl ended up smaller than most people's shawls when you mm. see them online. My mom is a small person. She's short. So in some ways, I love that. It's for my mom. And, of course, it's absolutely gorgeous. Isn't it just beautiful? It is. And I'm so curious how, like, it looks very complicated. It's not. It's so easy. So where do you cast on? Where's the cast on edge? Uh, now I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> the cast on edge is here. So it's this little black. And you're in, is that right? Yes. And you're increasing along this edge. Okay. Do you increase? I can't remember. I think you must increase here too. So you're knitting down. Down that way. Grows and so it grows this way. Mm -hmm. It grows that way. Okay. Yep. So your last row is this last bind off. And you actually, what's crazy now I'm thinking of it, you add the final color just to bind off. You don't knit anything else. You just bind off hmm. with this green. Well, on my side, oh. it was purple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. interesting. But and yeah, yarn just it's only it. two yarns. The yarn, the non-black yarn, the earth mm -hmm. yarn, has these colors in it, and it just changes, and it looks almost symmetrical. It's not, it really. It really does. Mm -hmm. So was this yarn dyed specifically for this pattern? I don't think so. Hmm. I think it's just That's a sock just... yarn. That just looks mind-boggling to yes. me. There is also a version where you can choose all, I can't remember how, six different colors maybe, and then it has a map of telling you exactly mm -hmm. where to place them. Mm -hmm. Then you have many more yarn ends, of course. But I talk more about in episode 21. I talk about really the details in episode 21, so you can go back and watch that. But I absolutely love it. My mom has worn it. She mm -hmm. loves butterflies, and it's just really... It's just really, I would, if I wore, I don't really wear shells. If I wore one, I would wear it like this, I think. Yeah. I just think it's so pretty. Yeah. yeah. I just covered up my microphone. Can you still hear me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We can see, we have this little receiver now, so we can see, like, that it's actually recording. So yeah. it's kind of comforting. <laughs> but I love that shawl, and I'm really glad I made it. But it's definitely, I think it's easy. It's a lot of counting. If you don't mm -hmm. like to count, it's all short rows. The whole mm -hmm. thing is short rows. Oh, wow. If you don't like to count. Oh, one thing I did want to mention in the pattern where did I put the pattern? Uh, in the pattern, uh, basically every single row is written out because every single row is different. But she divides, a lot of the little sections are the same shape. Like in, in one row, you might do four of those exact same shape. So on the pattern, she has this box, and there's four different, there's four different boxes inside the box. And so when you're going to do this shape, it's called the red shape. Mm -hmm. And then there's yellow doesn't doesn't coincide with the colors, but it's just so that you can see it in the pattern, print the pattern in color. Just, but um, when you get to that row, instead of writing out that whole section over and over again, she says, 
here refer to the red box. Mm -hmm. And then you four times in that row, you'll refer and just knit that red box. And then the yellow box, the blue box, and the green box. So once she, she says, if you're the kind of person who reads the whole pattern first, she says, if you're that kind of person, you might not want to in this case because it really comes across really confusing. Mm -hmm. But if you just trust the pattern, mm -hmm. it works. It actually really, really works. If you watch episode 21, you'll see she does suggest you carry, uh, when you're changing the yarns, you carry them up the side. I did that in the beginning only when there was two rows between, but I decided to stop. Mm -hmm. And also, this is one thing I did comment. I think there should be in the main instructions, just a reminder, in the short rows, they're wrap and turns. You do not need to pick up your wraps on the way back. Right, because it's garter stitch. Because it's garter stitch. I didn't realize this mm -hmm. until I read some of the... Mm -hmm. uh, I think I read the group, her Papillon group in Ravelry, and I, ha I had gone almost halfway, and I was picking up the wraps. It's not that big of a deal, but... One of the people in this Ravelry group said, oh, by the way, don't forget, you don't have to pick up the wraps because in garter stitch, they they don't show up anyway. Because obviously you pick up wraps in stockinette because you don't want a bar because a wrap and turn creates a bar. You don't want a bar in your stockinette. But if you're knitting in garter stitch, it's all bars anyway. So <laughs> I wish that was kind of a note because mm -hmm. it wasn't written to do it. It wasn't written not to do it. And so if it's, I just assumed that I would do it. We can add that to the list. I have on my of phone. Of things the pattern doesn't tell of you. things the pattern doesn't tell you. <laughs> yes. Yes, definitely. Which reminds me when we get to talking about our whips <clears throat> and my petite knit cow project, mm -hmm. which is a champagne cardigan. Uh, she doesn't, she, she uses Germa short rows. She doesn't really tell you how to do them at all. She just refers you to a video. Mm, meta. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, I know how to do them, mm -hmm. so I didn't refer to the video. So if I'm doing them wrong, oh, well, or differently than she does, oh, well, but... I didn't. So that kind of is a little bit, I don't really love how she writes patterns. Hmm. I don't like all the extra ex explanation. Mm -hmm. But I started knitting back in Europe where it was literally one or two pages, bare minimum, no extra instructions. Mm -hmm. I just think it catches me off guard. I don't know. Right. If, while she's explaining it, am I supposed to be doing it? <laughs> she tells you what you're going to do. Ahead of time. And then she tells you. And then I have to figure out, well, where do I actually start doing that? Right. So, <laughs> I mean, they're beautifully written patterns. Mm -hmm. If you're a beginner... Lots of help, except mm -hmm. this one thing I thought was odd with all that extra explanation. It doesn't really explain how to do a German short row. Hmm. I don't think it did. I'll look when I get to it. But yeah. Anyway, okay. that's that. That's my last FO, I think. Yeah. yeah. I actually have two more FOs. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I think we have to. I guess we have a couple more minutes. Okay. One thing I, I want to talk about quickly. Uh, I did that. Should I do it now? Yes, let me just talk about it quickly. Your tummy's growling. My tummy's growling. It's always <laughs> growling. Because um, we only have a couple minutes, and I really don't need okay. any more than that for this thing. So I was I really had wished I had finished the Kenzie embroidered cardigan by now so I could give it to Jana. But then one reason I wasn't doing it, because I had dyed my hair, mm -hmm. and my fingers were blue. I didn't want to get blue on it, and then I dyed my hair again. Mm -hmm. I brought it with me to Lunenburg thinking I would do it there, and I didn't. What do I have to do? The, it's finished knitting. You can go back and watch episode 21 to hear all the details, but I have to embroider on it. So I did do a s practice on my swatch, and I haven't done it. But I was asking you guys, and thank you. The viewers are so helpful. I know, so helpful. <laughs> I couldn't figure out. I have this water-soluble stabilizer that I trace the pattern on, and then I pin it where I want it and then I embroider but it's not really that much of a stabilizer it's mm -hmm. kind of floppy so what can I do and someone suggested because I thought can I really put knitwear yeah, well, in this yeah uh especially this thick and I don't really want to but someone said first put a put a piece of this in the embroidery hoop and then lay the sweater with the traced part on top and then I can just embroider through all three layers, mm -hmm. but at least then I, it's like a bigger space mm -hmm. that can hold it firm. Right. Isn't that a great idea? Yeah, great idea. So whoever that was, thank you. <laughs> but I had to buy an embroidery hoop because I, yeah. I think my mom has one, but she couldn't find one. Anyway, yeah. that's that. So this will be finished and given to Jana. And when I'm it, going to Texas on the 26th of October. Okay. okay. It'll be finished by then. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> so it, I, it's kind of a finished object, but not quite. The knitting is finished. Anyway. That's that. 
<laughs> All right. Yes, I have two more finished objects. So, what? September was supposed to be the month of me finishing whips. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that didn't I was happen. wondering about that. That didn't happen. <laughs> I did work on my Delia sweater, but not significantly enough to bring it and show. So I'm still on the first sleeve. I did make a mistake, and I did try to drop down, like, I don't know, eight rows. Mm -hmm. But it's half brioche, and so every row is really two rows. And I watched a video, and I thought I knew what I was doing, and it just, I couldn't. I tried and tried and tried. So I ended up just ripping back oh gosh and we're back to a good place now mm -hmm. so um I really do want to finish that though so I'm working um on it kind of part-time but I did finish a languishing whip and I bought this yarn at woolen folk last year it's woolen's and nosh in the colorway sprout and it's, it's kind of hard to tell here I'll hold it's already in the ball but um it is 90% targi wool and 10% nylon. And I just, her stripes are just um, beautiful. So, and then it comes with the contrasting, it looks like dirt with mm -hmm. vermiculite. Is mm -hmm. vermiculite the little silvery yep. things? Um, so, yeah, I just cast on a vanilla sock. I use the So Basic sock pattern by Summerly Designs. Um, that's kind of how I. You know, I, I refer to it when I do a heel, uh, you know, when I cast on. So she suggests doing a two-by-one rib. So I did that. The cool thing about these socks is that they are my first socks that actually fit, that actually have negative ease. Nice. So, so I wear a very average size uh, shoe, eight and a half. Women's mm -hmm. eight, eight and a half. Really average. So I thought, oh, well, I'm average. I should um, cast on 64 stitches. And I meant to check my uh, gauge. I'm pretty sure it's eight stitches. So it's uh, 20, no, 32 stitches for four inches. Mm -hmm. um, I've checked it a number of times. There's These were knit on a US size one, which is a 2.25 millimeter. And, um, but I was listening to Sarah from It's a Sarah podcast. And she knits a, um, a 56 stitch sock. So I thought, well, I mean, what's the worst that could happen? They'll be too small and I'll give them away or something. Mm -hmm. um, so I did. I cast on 57 stitches because that's divisible by three. And it's a two-by-one rib. And then I decrease by one stitch and then start the leg. I did do the shadow wrap heel on these. Mm -hmm. And I don't like it. It fits fine. I don't have any holes at the corners. But you didn't like the process. I didn't like the process. I didn't like the triple stitches. And... If you're super sensitive, you have sensitive feet, and I, I don't particularly, but there is quite a ridge where those triple stitches mm -hmm. are are hanging out. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I would – I know some people just love the shadow wrap heel, including Sarah from Insta Sarah, but I, I don't. So I love a heel flopping gusset. I love the way it looks. I love the way it fits. Um, if I were going to do this kind of short row heel, I would use the fish lips kiss heels because that worked fine for me, and you don't get that ridge. I think. So, yeah. So the thing about, and this is with hats too, if you have a smaller circumference, um, you need, then you have fewer decreases when you get to the toe. Mm -hmm. So I actually had to take the toe out and add another half inch, another like, I don't know, six rows to each, um, well, to the first sock. Mm -hmm. um, good thing I didn't do two at a time, huh? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so the, my my toes are shallower than they are when you do a 64 inch, a 64 stitch sock. Right. So um, I could have just knit some plain uh, rows with a contrast color just to make the toe a little bit deeper if I wanted more contrast, mm -hmm. but it ended up working out fine. So, um, so yeah, they fit perfectly. They're snug. And I could wear them with shoes. You know, a lot of my socks are kind of slouchy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Very happy with them. So, Yay. I'm glad that they're done. I so, I them. did finish something. Yay! <laughs> I did finish a whip. Do um, you have another one? I do. And so, uh, in the last episode, was I wearing my Nightingale Crescent? How many episodes ago was that? Yeah, that was, was the last one. Yeah, the last episode. I'm wearing the Nightingale Crescent by Lucinda Iglesias. Uh, who owns Beth Montreal Co. in Canada, in Montreal, mm -hmm. Montreal, Canada. Um, hi, Lucinda. Um, and I think I mentioned 
in that episode that there, I thought that there was a mistake in the pattern and there is not a mistake in the pattern. So you are not supposed to cast on extra stitches before you start the I cord around the hem and around the bottom of the sleeves. So um, just wanted to clarify that. And I knit that out of Moondrake Fua Fua in this poppy color. And I had, I just had barely dug into the second skein. So I think I maybe used, um, I don't know, very little of the second skein. So I thought, oh, on the cruise, I will cast on a Sophie scarf. And I started um, knitting and I just was like, I couldn't be bothered with the whole repeat of the increases. So I ripped it out and I cast on an Oslo hat. And I had this, um, which is also Moondrake, it's the BFL silk, um, because I had planned to do the Sophie scarf, so mm -hmm. I needed, you know, a lace weight and a fingering weight together. So I had the yarn, so I thought, oh, and I have the size four needles, so I'm just going to cast on um, an Oslo hat, and that's what I did. So I usually make the second size of the Oslo hat, which is maybe the junior size, mm -hmm. but the same thing with the hat. If it's a smaller circumference, you need to knit longer because you have fewer decreases. So I have to say it just uh, fits the top of my head. So um, it's fine though. It is so cute. Yeah, but I'm not going to put a pom-pom on it because I think it might look like Santa Claus. <laughs> I mean, even if it's a different color. So, um, but yeah, everyone, thank you so much for um, complimenting me on the red. So I thought, okay, I need a red hat. So in my effort to use <laughs> leftovers um I got to maybe here and I ran out of yarn so I had to come back in here and buy another skein of Fua Fua and I was I was bummed so I thought I'll make the penny gloves or I'll make something else well I ended up casting on and should I just go into my segue into my whip do it okay um I ended up casting on the Soho Square by Jackie Rose. Oh, here, let me hold one side. Well, and this is a new pattern by Jackie. And it is, um, if you've knit a half and half triangles wrap before, which I haven't, um, you will, this is, this will be familiar. She uses German short rows instead of wrap and turns. Um, but basically it's very similar construction. Um, I think she did add the I-cord edging, which I don't think the Pearl Soho half and half triangles wrap has. But um, I've never knit one, so this is kind of my um, my gateway into the half and half triangles wrap. Maybe I'll make one one day. So this is a cool pattern because it comes with a, so four sizes. The smallest size is called the skinny wink, and I think it's like a Sophie scarf. Mm -hmm. um, it's long and narrow. Then there's the wink, which is like a head scarf, so it might be something that, you know, if you had a convertible, you might, you know, oh, wear yeah. tied underneath your chin. Like a kerchief. Yeah, yeah, like a kerchief. And then this is the Soho scarf, which is the third size. And then there's the Soho um, wrap, which is the largest size. Now, the largest size is knit on a U.S. 4. Um, but this is knit on a U.S. 6, which is 4 millimeter. And I didn't swatch because, you know, it's, it's, a, a, it's a scarf. Right. So, um yeah, so I had this red, and when I had COVID, I came and stood out in the parking lot with a mask on, and uh, Emily, who works here, graciously, you know, brought out the Fua Fua to the parking lot so I could kind of choose my colors, mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> I brought this in to Felicia. I'm like, I don't know, help. And she's like, it looks a little collegiate. I was like, yeah, it kind of does, like a rugby shirt. Mm -hmm. But um, I did pink, pick out this, and I want to say it's like pink candy. Ugh, I have the tag in here, something about candy. It's what Felicia made her um, nightingale crescent out of, electric pink candy. So I couldn't wait to add this color. But the drama continued because... I got to the last inch and ran out of the blue. Oh, gosh. So I even went back down to where I cast on, and I always have, you know, I had like a, a foot or something. <laughs> so I cut that off, and I, you know, spit spliced it, and then I still, I still didn't have enough. So I came mm -hmm. in here this morning, and I 
So in my effort to use up my leftovers, I keep buying more yarn. So <laughs> Karen's like, well, you can make a, um, another Ozzo hat. I thought, well, I don't want to run out of yarn. So. <laughs> but I literally used... You can make an Ozzo hat without a folded brim. Yeah, I literally used 10 feet of this skein. So I'm, I'm sure I'll have enough, but I couldn't wait to cast on this. So I don't understand candy. the construction because yeah, so Kat, why aren't you knitting all the colors? It's not in tart. Okay. So hold this side um, it. and it's cool in the pattern, which I have to say is very well written and there are video links, um, it, embedded in the pattern. So if you have any questions about changing colors or about the German chart rows, um, you know, I thought it was explained very well. Um, I did make a mistake. So you cast on all of your stitches. So this is the cast on edge right here. You cast mm -hmm. on all of your stitches. Okay. And then you start knitting. You're knitting this way. Uh -huh, knitting this way. Mm -hmm. And your every other row, because you're knitting back and forth in garter stitch, you're creating a German short row and then knitting back and then creating your I cord and then knitting over here and creating another short row. So your, your rows are getting shorter and shorter and shorter as you get to the tip. I still don't understand. I know. <laughs> I still don't understand. So, so yes, your rows are getting shorter and shorter and shorter so that you end up with a triangle. But why aren't you knitting this way? I don't understand. I am. But the cable goes all the way through here. Right. So you're knitting part way and then part way and then part way, and then part way. So it, it makes a triangle. I know. It's so little... now you're only knitting this much? This far? Um, Every time? No, I'm knitting one stitch farther each time. So this, when I cast on it, <laughs> sorry, is this complicated? It's not that complicated. It's okay. We don't have to, yeah, I, uh, I'll, no. I'll get it eventually. Um, so the when you're knitting the first half of the triangle, your, tri your rows are getting shorter and shorter. When you're knitting the second half of the triangle, your rows are getting longer and longer. Oh, okay. So you're resolving the German short rows I see. on this side. I you're see. creating the German short rows okay. on this side. Okay. So. <clears throat> yeah, so I um, these colors will repeat on the other triangle in kind of a chevron pattern, but the red will become the caramel color and the caramel will become oh, the red. So and this is kind of the this center? This is the main color. Yes, that's the center. Oh, yeah, that's the center. Wow, so it'll ingenious. be ingenious. People are so smart. I know. When people look at my knitwear and they say, "Oh, you're so talented," I say, "Oh no, no, <laughs> I'm just following thing. instructions." Right. It's the person who created this and this right. and this. They're the talent. Thank so this you. is this is a square. So it's two triangles that form a square. Oh, wow. So this is the hypotenuse I of see. a right triangle. The mathematician. Okay. <laughs> well, she um, when Jackie explains the construction of the shawl she said she used algebra and Fibonacci numbers and um yeah she's, she's so you were ready to knit that yeah, she's a teacher also so yeah but I was saying too once you wear it and you're wrapping it right. it doesn't All look as collegiate colors. it's not right. gonna you're not gonna see just stripes right you know it's exactly. just gonna it's gonna yeah it's gonna be fine <laughs> that's gorgeous I love it and I really loved this this color is called Prada blue and I have always admired it and thought it was beautiful. So really I have is. the red. I wanted the Prada blue. I um, This cafe color, I'm, I'm not sure what it's called, is a new color for them. And then the electric pink candy. I can show you all the colors together, I think. Um, That's um, okay. I can put it in the in the captions. Yeah, I'll put it in the show notes. And um, Beautiful. So I think I'm becoming a shawl knitter. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, another shawl that I have not cast on yet, but um, I, I have a couple shawls. I have two, but I love the idea of a shawl because mm -hmm. you can wear a blouse and you can just t take the shawl off anytime you mm -hmm. want. And it's not like taking off your sweater. Mm -hmm. Cause like, what if you're not wearing anything underneath the sweater? Right. That's why I'm trying to knit more cardigans now because then I can actually have a blouse on underneath right. or something. Yeah. Or what if you were sweaty underneath your sweater and you don't want to take your sweater off because right. it's all sweaty <laughs> and you know, so I am embracing the shawl. I never thought I'd be a shawl knitter, but Great. I think I am now. Nice. Yeah, it's good TV knitting, too. <laughs> yeah, I have so many shawls to knit now. I keep buying shawl things for my mom, but I can always wear them just because I give them to my mom. Oh, we yeah. live together, so. Um, okay, so do you have more whips? I have two more whips. So I'm making something for my husband. Nice. My husband is turning 60 this year, and we don't do big gifts or anything, but this is so funny. I'm making him the DRK Everyday Socks, and this was... Uh, a quite 
um, recommended pattern from a lot of viewers. Mm -hmm. So it, because it fits so well because it's, um, two by two rib. So I cast on using the Turkish cast on, which was, I think I, um, said and mentioned in another video, I think Andrea Mowry, who wrote the pattern, the DRK everyday socks might be left-handed because in her video where she demonstrates the Turkish cast on my magic loop kept being like what I imagined to be upside down or backwards or um so I just looked at a different video and, and it was fine so I cast on and then I'm doing increases and I did use my twice sheared sheep we are an affiliate by the way and there's a link in the description box below I did use it to remember to increase they have a little tiny uh row counter that's like knit and then decrease and then they have one that's knit and increase K and I, mm. K and D. Mm. And so um, I loved it. It was easy for me. So I kept trying this on him. And she does give recommendations. So this is a pattern that goes from babies to adults, like large feet. This is the second to the last size. Um, and I kept trying it on him. And I just wasn't sure because it's toe up. And I've really never made a toe up sock, like where I should start doing the gusset increases. But she does give you recommendations there from the like the American Council of Yarn or something. Mm -hmm. um, so I think in hindsight, I could have started the gusset increases maybe half an inch sooner. But he tends to wear his wool socks just around the house with his slippers. So he's not going to be putting these in shoes, in I don't shoes. think. No. And this is knit in Regia Merino Yak, which is one of my favorite sock yarns. It's uh, wool, uh, yak, polyamide, and oh, I wrote it down. No, that's it. Wool, polyamide, and yak. Mm -hmm. And these are knit on a U.S. size one, which is a 2.25 needle, knitting the magic loop. And I love, love them. Look at this gusset. The gusset is gorgeous. Isn't that beautiful? Hopefully you can get a good picture of that. Yeah. It's really beautiful. So the rib, the increases, um, of course I misread the pattern. So when you're making a heel flap and gusset, you make the heel flap first. So I thought I was only supposed to be knitting on one, either the back needle or the front needle, but I wasn't. I was supposed to be knitting all the way around. So once I got that figured out, um, we were fine. But I love the beautiful it's gorgeous. gusset it's increases. really gorgeous. So, yeah, I had him try it on last night. And this is a flegal heel. And it was great. I didn't mind knitting it at all. And it turns It's beautiful. Perfect. No holes. And she uh, makes a suggestion about how to close holes at the top when you start knitting in the round again, which I'm doing in pattern. So I just started the rib that will be on the, on the leg mm -hmm. in the back. So, yeah. It's beautiful. So I'm really pleased with them. I think they're really, really beautiful. Yay. Even though they're a little bit too long, but that's okay. Now I know. I did write down in my Ravelry. I think it was 68. No, that's my socks. I don't know how many rows it was, but um, now I know. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So that is my kind of my car project. And are you done with whips? Oh, no, you have your champagne cardigan. So I do have my petite knit. Um uh, work in progress okay. and then I have some acquisitions okay do you have acquisitions I might not talk about them today just so okay. that we're not renting don't yeah run too long. I'm going to talk about them in the context of another shawl mm -hmm. just briefly I mean maybe I'll just mention them really fast but okay um okay so my next whip and my only other whip oh I did want to mention this Wait, where did it go it fell down I have been working on my uh, primrose throw mm-hmm uh, you can see it's basically four rows deep now, and I'm working on the next sections. But I had an idea. Oh, I got my flower beetle back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's in the parking lot. <laughs> so I can drive it now, but only locally, because just in case they didn't quite figure it out, but it's run, it's running. But I have a very old steering wheel cover on it, mm. and I want to make a steering yeah. wheel cover out of this. Oh, that would be so cool. Not out of this exact thing, right, but right. using the same flowers. So if anybody wants to help me... <laughs> I'm not a crocheter, like how to measure it, what to do exactly. I, I don't know. I got to figure it out. Uh, but I'm really, I, I definitely, because it's going to go in the car. Yeah. So wouldn't it be cool to have a steering wheel cover Yeah. with the same design? It seems like you could just make a long tube and then, you know how the, you like yarn bomb trees? You would just like. And then just how to make up. it so that it. 
kind of goes around yeah. like it attaches. And you'd have to actually like sew it onto the steering wheel. Okay. I would okay. Think. Yeah, I'll try to figure it out. I don't know. But um, yeah, so that's that. That's a quick one. Still working on that. I was doing maybe five flowers a day for a while, but I once I started my champagne cardigan, that went out the window. Mm -hmm. But this is my champagne cardigan. So what do I want to say about it? I did swatch. I did talk about how I swatch in uh, the... When did I talk about it? I don't even remember. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So my champagne cardigan... Of course, it's by Petite Knit. It's, um, mine is in Isayer, Maryland, held with Long Yarns Mohair Luxe Lame. And when you see it in person, you can see mm -hmm. the sparkle. It's so mm -hmm. beautiful. It almost looks like raindrops fell on it, mm -hmm. and it's like a little wet. It's um, a top-down raglan v-neck cardigan. And there's one-by-one one rib on the bottom of the body and the sleeves. And then the button band is double knit. And I do have to do a swatch for the double knit which I'm not looking forward to because the double knit attaches this way on the knitting and it's uh, a one stitch per row. So you use a much smaller needle and you just have to really make sure it, it matches. But I swatched, it calls for a suggested US 7 for the main part of the knitting and I swatched a, no I can't remember, 7, 8, 9 and 10 and I got gauge with the US 9 and there are nine sizes in the pattern from extra small to 5XL with finished bust measurements of 44 and a half to 68 inches she does suggest 11 inches of ease which I am not doing because that would be huge mm -hmm. <laughs> and here at pick up every stitch they said it runs really 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 big so I'm actually making a size small, and I already feel so much smaller <laughs> just because I'm making a size small. I never. And you're using DK weight instead of worsted. It's a yes. worsted pattern. Yes, but I did get uh, gauge, gauge because I'm using a fingering held with a mohair, and mm -hmm. it calls for a DK held with a mohair. Mm -hmm. So mine is much lighter weight. Hopefully it'll turn out, and it'll be as gorgeous as the one here. It'll be lighter weight, mm -hmm. but hopefully it'll still work. But, so I'm making the size small, which should be finished 46 inch bust. And what else? I started it, dirt, um, no, before our cast on party. I did start it on October 1st because I wanted to actually be able to knit. And I've already made many mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I forgot to do my last double stitch for my German short row. Uh, and so I... Just someone's at the door. Someone's at the who's door. Who's that knocking on the door? <laughs> who's that ringing a bell? Remember that song? Mm -hmm. It's a real yarn job. <laughs> yeah, so somebody just rapped on the door and it was FedEx. I, you know, usually they're not here by now, mm -hmm. but uh, the guy obviously, the shades are drawn and everything, but he sees the lights on, so yeah. he figures he can deliver now. Mm -hmm. So I was talking about my champagne cardigan. And I forgot to do the last double stitch when I did my last German short row, uh, right when I was finishing the short rows. So when I got around to resolve it, it wasn't there. So instead of undoing the two rows, I decided to just, you know, um, work, you know, undo those two stitches. And mm -hmm. I figured out how to put Create the double one. stitch in wow. without knitting back. So I was so cool. proud of myself. I always love to try that. It helps me figure out what the construct, you know, what, right. how it's actually working. So mm -hmm. I did that. That was good. But then, now it's somewhat um, mindless. So after I divided for the sleeves, on one one almost entire row, I purled instead of knitted on the right mm -hmm. side. So I well, and to, it's black yarn. It's black yarn. It was dark. It was, you know, my husband and I were watching TV in the evening. And then also, when I did divide, um, at one point I counted my stitches just to make sure I had the right stitches. And I was one stitch short. Oh. So then I counted each little section and under mm -hmm. one arm I accidentally only cast on six stitches instead of seven. And so I thought, oh, I'll just make one. And who's going to notice and who's going to care? But it just drove me nuts. So I just ripped back like almost, I don't know, maybe ten rows Ooh. so I could fix that one little thing. But anyway, yeah. I still make mistakes and it is what it is. But I love it. And... Here it is, and even though I'm making the size small, it's going to be roomy. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's really going to be nice. So if I finish this, I can wear this mm -hmm. to Rhinebeck. But people say that the double knit 
button band takes a long time. Okay. So I'm not going to... Take to knit the sweater. <laughs> I don't like deadline knitting, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to worry about it. And it will be done when it's done. So that's that. Okay. That's it for my whips. Okay. I wanted to say a couple more things about this. Um, the suggested yarn is Birdie by Lamb and Kid. Yes, Birdie by Lamb and Kid, which is another fluffy yarn. So this Fua Fua is uh, like a brushed cashmere. It's a fingering weight. So I thought it was a great substitute. Um, one of the things I'm thinking about why she suggested a smaller needle size for the large wrap is if you use a yarn that isn't fuzzy, I think um, this is knit on a US 7, I believe. No, 6, I said. Uh, 6, which is a 4 millimeter. Um, I think the fabric would just be too open. Mm. So I did see some of the projects on Ravelry where I felt like the fabric was really open. So um, just keep that in mind if you're choosing yarn for this. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Um, nice. I did say that I thought that there was a mistake in the pattern. So in the pattern, she says, knit up to, and I read it to you, knit up to the stitch before your German chart row. And so what I ended up doing was having a German short row, regular knit stitch, German short row, regular knit stitch, but you're supposed to write knit up to the German short row. So it's not necessarily a mistake. I just misinterpreted the, mm. the directions. And if you watch the videos, it's explained. Okay. So, yeah. So that's um, just something to look out for if you decide to make the pattern. Mm -hmm. so. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So other uh, whips? Uh, whips or <laughs> did you say acquisitions? No, I have one more whip. Oh, right. You have your Petite Knit My Petite project. Knit yes, go for project. It. And, of course, I I cannot make up my mind because she has so many beautiful patterns. But I did cast on a number of times, in fact, <laughs> my vertical striped sweater that I am making out of Isayer Maryland, which is the same wool that you are using, and Isayer um, silk mohair. Mm -hmm. So in this lovely, this actually turns out to be a little bit light, more, more light brown than taupe, um, which is great, I think. Mm -hmm. So a little bit less gray. So I cast on, made a mistake. Um, I don't know, this is my third cast on. So I think I did this while we were um, filming our catch up episode. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't have very, very <laughs> That's okay. Much. This is going to be a slow growing project. So I may actually cast on a Saturday night sweater because that's going to be a quick knit mm -hmm. on large needles. Mm -hmm. I think it's holding three strands of mohair together. So I might cast that on so that I have something more instant gratification because I <laughs> this is going to be a project. So it's a bottom up, which is nice. So it's just four by four rib. I chose not to do the ribbing at the bottom, the one by one rib. So I just went right into the four by four rib mm -hmm. and it's straight up and then you separate um, for the sleeves and then knit the front and back separately. And yeah, it's a pretty straightforward construction. I don't think I'm going to do the double knit um, neckband. I think I'm just going to do a single neckband, probably something that's a little bit more like a wide neckline. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't want a lot of bulk up there. Um, what else did I want to say? I think that's it. Oh, it's a drop shoulder construction. Nice. Yeah, that'll be my first bottom-up drop shoulder. There you so go. We'll see how it goes. So yeah, that is my petite knit. One of my petite knit cal. Yeah. I'm actually going to have to put this down okay. uh, soon because my friend Florence. I'm making the baby sweater. Mm -hmm. I decided to make it a petite knit pattern. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do the Ellen's, the Ellen's cardigan, pattern. and I she's moving to Georgia. She, she's, she and her husband are retiring so they can, they live in Connecticut, so they can move to Georgia and be near their grandkids. Mm. I mean, they were retirement age anyway, but mm -hmm. so they're leaving, I think, in two weeks. Mm. So I want to have it done before she goes. So I will, that will be a quick finished object. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> Is there a bonnet that I could make? Petite knit, do they do bonnets? She has several hats. Okay. Because mm -hmm. I can do a bon a matching yeah. bonnet. But yeah, anyway, so I'm going to throw that in there. But <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm, I noticed that in our last video, I cleared my throat a lot, but I'm still kind of post-COVID, so mm -hmm. I do have a little bit of congestion. So sorry about that. Right. All right. So acquisitions? Yeah. So let me, just quickly. Let me just do mine really, really, really fast. So one <laughs> thing I forgot... I realized I forgot to say when I was talking about Lunenburg was um, the knitting group there is lovely. <laughs> Sandra organized it. So hi, Sandra, and all the lovely women who are in it. Um, 
it, it was just so fun. I went two week, two Thursdays in a row. It's at the Laughing Whale Coffee Roasters Coffee Shop. Mm-hmm. From, on Thursdays from 12.30 to uh, 3. And it was really, really fun. So I wanted to say hi to everybody there. But my favorite thing, I have three favorite things, and they're related <laughs> to Lunenburg because I didn't insert pictures in that video. Ooh, so I want people to be able to see, see pictures. Okay. So this is my gorgeous hat. I did try it on. Uh, my first favorite thing, my main favorite thing is Anna Schub. And... Uh, she is AKA the hat junkie <laughs> and I was told about her watch our previous catch episode to hear about all that but she lives and works in Lunenburg she has a studio she is a milliner and she makes gorgeous hats so many styles um, so many different um, materials and I first met her at the Lunenburg Farmer's Market, and then I was also invited to her studio. So, mm-hmm. um, but it was really fun. She says in her uh, brochure that she, her passion for hats began over 30 years ago, and uh, she started making hats, and she makes them out of um, uh, fabric. She hand felts, wet felts. Um, she makes them out of straw. She makes them out of, I mean, so many different materials. And they're just, they're just works of art. Every single hat is different. Every single hat is absolutely gorgeous. So check out her website, uh, thehatjunkie.com. Or no, I'm sorry, hatjunkie.com. And on Instagram, she's thehatjunkie or Anna Shub, S-H-O-U-B. But she is just amazing and definitely check out her studio if you're in Lunenburg and buy a hat. I mean, they're, it's just so amazing. I wish you could just see her studio has this beautiful checkered floor and she lives in an old, in the UNESCO heritage area of Lunenburg in a, you know, a, a old house. I just, just amazing. So definitely check out Anna Shub and Anna, I just loved meeting you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so everything about her will be in the show notes. Also, I did obviously love The Mariner's Daughter. And when I was there, I bought this Cascade Yarns Eco Plus Hemp. Mm. And I'll insert a picture. I didn't insert pictures in the previous video. So I want to insert a picture of this beautiful yarn. And I am going to make the Dappled Lace Raglan by James Watts. Mm. They, it's This is not the the suggested yarn weight, but Hana had a, had done it in this so it's a thicker a little thicker sweater and not quite as um see-through and I just loved it it was gorgeous so I'm gonna knit that and then um finally I mean I love the Mariner's Daughter if you're in Lunenburg you have to go but another destination yarn shop if you're in Nova Scotia you have to go to Gasparo Valley Fibers it is on a farm it is huge there's just so many I could have wandered around there for hours and hours and hours my husband let me or took me there on our anniversary I mean it was the sweetest thing but I purchased uh, this beautiful Gasparo Valley Fibers Uh, did I look it up it's 100% Nova Scotia Cotswold wool and I did look up the weight because it isn't listed on here. From the grams to yards mm-hmm. ratio, it looks like it's a DK light worsted mm-hmm. and suggested for that weight a US 5 to 7. And I think the pattern that I was thinking of knitting, actually, if I can get to a third petite knit pattern, I <laughs> think I was going to knit the Moby pullover, mm. slipover. It's like a, a Gansey. Yeah, actually mm-hmm. the Moby Slip over, the one without mm-hmm. sleeves. Mm-hmm. Because at the inn we stayed at, I forgot to say this, we stayed at Smuggler's Cove Inn and the owners, Michael and um, Rita, were adorable. But Rita, one of the first days, was wearing knitwear. Oh, wow. And I said, oh my goodness, that's beautiful. <laughs> and I asked, do you knit? And she said, no, I don't knit. Uh, and I, I can't remember if it was her daughter. Sorry, I'm so sorry, I forget all these things. Her mother knits as well. But then... One day she was wearing a Moby slipover, and I said, what pattern is that? And so she got the details from from whoever and wrote them oh, down wow. for me. But every single day that I saw her, she was wearing a different piece of knitwear. Oh, wow. And um, so I think that's what I'm going to knit with that yarn is the Moby slipover. 
And somebody commented on that video um, where you showed the yarn, and it is a long staple. Yes. Yes. And how did you know that by touching it? Um, because it's very silky. Wow. Yeah. But There's... I can I knew because I bought some long staple yarn mm -hmm. at Rhinebeck last year. You're just amazing. So. You know that? <laughs> She's amazing. <laughs> anyway, so those are all of my acquisitions. She's Sorry, too then. Kind. No, <laughs> she really is amazing. Mm -hmm. So many things that you love about knitting and that you really um, internalize and process and appreciate. I don't even think about. <laughs> it doesn't even cross my mind. <laughs> well, I guess when I, because I got the yarn, it just, um, you know, it came with a pamphlet. And so I read about it. And so I thought, oh, I'm going to need to think about what I'm going to make with this. Yeah. Yeah. It's not something, it's not next to skin. Yeah. So anyway. those were my favorite things. I have all those favorite things this time. Okay. Yay. All right. Well, quickly, I have some acquisitions. Um, I mentioned that I stopped at Skein, which is, and now I don't remember what town in Newport it was in, but it's not far from the Mermaid's Pearl. Mm -hmm. And I've been to the Mermaid's Pearl before, and I did stop there. But I wanted to show you these cool... Mm, sock yarn beautiful kits, and it's wound into two skeins so 250 gram skeins so they it's match the, so mm -hmm, each sock matches match perfectly love it freya fine hand paint and i just thought the the colors were gorgeous and this is a little sample of what it will knit up to be like oh I like know. a fade so beautiful i so love it pink and gray so beautiful so i bought i bought two of them i bought this actually for a birthday gift for um oh my goodness mine, so i just thought that they were so beautiful and i hadn't seen these maybe i've seen this brand in other yarn shops but not these little um kits so i thought they were awesome i love it yeah so i bought those and um so i was going to participate and i am still going to participate i think in the Stephen West MCAL 2023. Anyway, I bought two kits. Long story short, I bought two kits to do the MCAL. Um, so I will show you the kits and then remind me about the whole Ravelry tip that I, mm -hmm. I discovered. So uh, the first kit I bought is from Sonder Yarn Company in Canada. And it is a four color shawl. And the name of the uh, MCAL is the Geo Gradient. Um, so this was the first kit I bought, which I thought was beautiful. And it's the Sonder Yarn Co. Sunday Morning, uh, which is 75% BFL and 25% Masham. And it's nice and wooly, mm -hmm. gorgeous colors. And this was a kit, so I didn't have to think about what colors to buy. Right. So this is one choice. And then, of course, I went to McKinney Knittery and picked out a second of kit. Of course. And this kit I came up with on my own. But they carry wool folk. And uh, this is what I made Emily's um, Muscleboro hat may I see out one? of. Yes. I'll just see one. Yeah. It is wool folk tinned. And I have to say, this is some of the softest yarn I've ever felt it's in my amazing. entire life. It was a pleasure to knit with. She had... Oh, the whole array of colors and I was having a hella from Danish Musings moment and just this you know very um subtle um neutral palette so I picked these out also and I I just love it let me warn you something about yes. winding wool folk yarn yes if it's always like that mm -hmm. the tag oh. is attached not at the end but it's it's not a separate yarn it's you, part of the yarn and you told me that you cut it into two I did it a few different ways. The best mm -hmm. thing is to put it on your, um, what's that thing called? Swift. Swift. Keep the tag on it. Put it on your swift. If you take the tag off, you'll have an extra piece hanging. Like the yarn will be right. too long. Yep. So no, leave it right. on. Start it on your ball winder. When you get to the tag, then rip it off or take hmm. it off. Okay. Because otherwise, you'll cut your yarn. You'll cut off a piece hmm. of your yarn. And we know we run out of yarn. Yeah. So. I don't think that happened to me with my other tin. Okay, then maybe they do it differently. Yeah, I don't know, but I will keep an eye on that because I hate it when that happens. Yes. Yes. So that was my second um, kit for the Stephen West. I Anna love Carol. it. Beautiful. Um, yeah, so acquisitions. And um, I did stop at some yarn shops on the cruise. So, um, oh gosh, the name of this, was it Knitwit? 
No, was good knitwit. vibrations. No, it was Knitwit, the first one I stopped at. Oh, in I'm sorry. Portland, yes, in Portland, Portland uh -huh. Maine, where I got this book called On Skein of Death. And I just thought the cover, the artwork was so cute, and I didn't bring it in our last video. And I, I um, said in our last video, I said, I kind of put it down because it's a murder mystery, and I, I was having bad dreams. But I actually think now that that was my horrible COVID I had two nights that were pretty mm -hmm, bad, mm -hmm. terrible headache, and I think that is what was giving me bad dreams. So I have picked it up again. I don't have too much left. And uh, the author is Allie Ple Plater, Pleater, mm -hmm. and she actually friended us on Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. And I messaged her because I said, oh, if you watch our video, I said that it gave me bad dreams, but it was really the COVID. And she said, oh, yeah, that happened to me when I had COVID, too. So, But it is a murder mystery. It I is, mean, it's, it is, it's, but it's not gory at all. It's very sweet, set in a yarn shop. And if you're a knitter, knitter, you'll definitely like it. It's definitely a vacation read. It's very easy reading, but it's well written. So I Yeah, I've wanted to read it. Yeah, yeah. So, and there's a whole series. So I'll give it to you when I'm done. Yeah. Yeah, it's cute. So I, I definitely want to see who done it. And I don't have that many pages left, so... <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh, gosh. I think that's it. And it's getting dark outside. Yeah, we probably should wrap it up so that they yeah. can get and out of here. I just want to mention that um, all the information on the samples that are behind us uh, are in the show notes. And this is Karen's. Um, Karen is one of the owners of Pick Up Every Stitch, where we film. And this is her latest design. Oops. <laughs> and it's called Catherine. Mm -hmm. And it's really cool construction. So it's knit from it's sideways. So mm -hmm. from sleeve to sleeve. Okay, so from center, sleeve, center, sleeve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's just absolutely beautiful. And this one is knit in Moondrake. The BFL silk. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And so all the details will be in the show notes. That is the field sweater by Camilla Vad. And this, um, what's it called? The field, field sweater, sweater is mm -hmm. knit in the suggested yarns, which are Isayer. No. Eco baby. Eco baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the Friday slipover by Petite Knit, um, also knit in Moondrake. And then we have another sweater back there, which is the. Um, oh, Miro Menel. Yeah. <laughs> Jonna had knit one before. Yeah. Miro Menel by Cleonis. Oh, Cleonis, yes. Mm -hmm. And that's in. Uh, and make the fiber co fiber and go. make DK, yeah. mm -hmm. but uh, um, Felicia was wearing this the other day when oh, we did the so cast cute. on party. I tried it on. I was like, yes, please. It's, I want it's one of these. absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, so love it. Love it. Um, I guess that's it. Okay. So uh, did I? We want to say anything else? I'm trying to think. Let me look here. Oh, I know. In our um, oh, I didn't say what my favorite thing is. Oh, <laughs> do your favorite thing. Okay. So when we had our cast on party for the Petite Knit Knit Along, one of the participants in the cast on party was uh, Tosh, mm -hmm. which is short for Natasha. And Natasha has a podcast. And the funny thing is, I recognized her, but I, I didn't know where. You I recognized, recognized her, her face from. in the little boxes, right? Yeah, you, we but, didn't know she was going to be on. You know, I couldn't place her. Yeah. And there was a lot going on and a lot of voices. And um, I found Tosh because I was knitting the Muscleboro hat, and I was knitting it out of two colors, so I wanted to know, like, how long uh, to knit each color. So I, you know, put in my YouTube search, Muscleboro hat, and one of her videos came up. So I watched her video, and her um, podcast is called... Mostly Knitting? Mostly Knitting. And she's a math teacher. So, yeah, we have a lot And she's of so sweet. She's so sweet. She put a huge long comment on our last video that was just so yeah. lovely. Yeah, and she has, um, she just has a beautiful aesthetic. She, she makes a lot of patterns that are interesting to me. Um, you know, she's very technical. She does the maths with the, the gauge swatching and things, and she's thoughtful about how she pairs yarn with patterns. Mm -hmm. And she's kind of got a kind of a broad color palette, too. So she knits some brights, and she knits some neutrals. She is knitting a camisole, I want to say camisole number 15, maybe from My Favorite Things Knitwear, that is such a beautiful, it's like frog juice green, but it's such a beautiful color on her, and it's so elegant the way it fits. And my husband happened to walk in the room, I think, when she was um, on, and he's like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, it's super sexy. But, um, yeah, she lives in Australia. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, so definitely check her out. Yeah, definitely check her yeah. out. So one thing I wanted to mention before we close, when we came in today, 
First of all, I do want to thank Karen and Felicia. They gave a discount for our Petite Knit Cow for Yarn. It's over now, so you can't get the discount anymore. But you can still join the cow, but thank them so much for the discount. Mm -hmm. But when we came in today, right now, it will be over by the time this airs. Uh, right now is the Western Connecticut Yarn Crawl, mm -hmm. and we're the only, we're so close to Connecticut that they joined it. We're the only New York shop uh, in the Yarn Crawl. We, like I own the place, mm -hmm. they <laughs> joined it. But the place was so busy when we got here. Yeah, it, was it was really great. Busy. We love it when it's busy. And there was this adorable Nona grandma um, <laughs> named Suzanne, and she had her grandson here, and she was buying yarn, and he's wandering around. Adorable, yeah. right? So He and, helped me with the microphones. Yes. So when we were setting up, <laughs> a lot of times we turn the camera on and just record whatever, and he... As soon as we'd set, set up one chair, he'd, mm -hmm. he'd climb in the chair, and then he'd look in the suitcase. we carry stuff in the suitcase. And he was just so adorable. At one point, I heard him with his Nona say, Nona, can you make me a, a black bat cape? <laughs> it was so cute, a black bat cape. So she was picking out yarn for something. But I didn't know she owns uh, two little shops in Katona oh. nearby. Oh. She owns Ruby Sue hmm. in Katona and Gather, which is a home goods shop. Oh, interesting. I know, housewares yeah. and stuff. So we got to go check those out. But you can see him. I did get permission to Aww. include. It's so cute because John is talking to him and asking him <laughs> questions. And it was really sweet. Well, speaking of visitors to the shop, we had a viewer come all the way from Germany. Oh, my goodness. And she and her uh, traveling companion were staying in Brooklyn. And we had messaged on Instagram a little bit. Her name is Anya. But I have to say thank you, Anya, for making the trip up to pick up every stitch. There was a torrential downpour right as they were coming in. They took the train from um, Grand Central to Mount Kisco. Mm -hmm. And then they got in a taxi. It's it's walkable, but it, it was just pouring rain. Got in a taxi, came here, and the taxi only took cash, which is weird. Mm -hmm. And so they didn't have cash. So the taxi's like, oh, it's free. <gasps> so they were so surprised. Oh, in New York. Yeah. See, we're nice. We're nice in New York. <laughs> and she brought us presents. Mm -hmm. And I, she brought coffee. She, she brought, brought coffee. decaf for me. And caffeine for me. Regular for you. And we've already had our, our made a pot of the decaf. And it was delicious. It was um, coffee from her area. And she brought some tea that I have. It's got those blue cornflowers in it. Mm -hmm. And it just smells heavenly. I haven't tried it yet. But she did gift us two patterns, which I brought along. So um, these patterns are by Paula, Paula Strict. Did I say that? Yeah, Paula Knits. Mm -hmm. Paula Knits. Stricken is knit. Yeah, the Emil bag and the Lanza bag. This is a postcard from her area that shows nice. like the crafty uh, area of um, um, Leipzig. Leipzig. She's from Leipzig. Okay. And so she gifted us these beautiful patterns too. Yes. Thank you so, so much, Anya. Thank you. We'll insert a picture with Anya. We have to insert a picture yeah. with Anya. She's adorable. She has a child who, who's 21 and she looks 21. I mean, <laughs> I gorgeous. Like, excuse me, but I think I misunderstood. You have children? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She was just lovely. So if you let us know with enough notice, you yeah. know, and, and we are available and we're in town, we mm -hmm. would love to meet you. Yeah. So, you know, you know, let us know with enough notice yeah. and we'll come by and say hi at, yeah. at Pick Up Every Stitch. I we know, love that. such a nice afternoon. So fun. It was really yeah. nice. Yeah. And then Jonna offered to drive them back to the train station. Oh, I did. You did. Yeah. That was very well, it's sweet. it was still raining. So. It was still raining. Yeah. Yeah. So that was nice. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. I think that's it. Yeah. All right. So what are we going to say? Uh, uh, comment. Oh, to join the... 15,000. Oh, right. Comment with any comment. Yep. Um, and then like, subscribe, share. Don't forget we have merchandise, t-shirts and stuff. <laughs> Become a member if you... Become a member to. and yeah. buy from Twice Shared Sheep using our affiliate link. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And we'll see you next time. Yep. Bye. Bye. I've never felt so much like I'm flying by the seat of my pants as I do today. <laughs> One stitch looks bigger than the other. Look. Oh, yeah. It is crazy how different they look. I know. How deep my yoke is. Look at that. I know. How deep is your yoke? How deep is your yoke? <laughs> I didn't even know what gave one. It's fine. I'm going to try to whip through a couple of my... <laughs> no pun intended.
someone's the door. Someone's at the door. Who's that knocking on the door? Who's that ringing the bell? Remember that song? Make it right.